AMD's Ryzen 7000 series chips are very impressive, but is it enough? The new CPUs will keep the same core counts, but with drastically higher clock speeds. I mean, apparently the 7950X will be able to boost all the way up to 5.7 GHz. Not to mention that the new cores themselves will be faster as well, by about 15% in single-threaded and by about 35% in multi-threaded workloads. But the thing is, Intel's also launching their 13th gen at the same time as well, and their cores have not only gotten faster, but they've also added a ton more cores as well. I mean, the top Ryzen 5 CPU will have a total of 6 cores, whereas Intel's top i5 CPU will have 14 cores in total. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a closer look. So the new generation is going to be impressive. There's There are going to be improvements and stuff like that. But the thing is uh, that Intel's 13th generation of CPUs on paper just seems like it's gonna be so much more amazing than current amd's offering so you know amd is finally finally breaking the five gigahertz barrier by a lot actually uh and you know they're also improving their cores these are new cores there are better cores so the cpus are going to be faster but you know the thing is uh they really are competing with intel i mean they are literally launching their new generations of uh, cpus you know both companies essentially on the same day and intel's offerings so far just seem way more compelling and uh, that is simply because of the fact that you know uh, amd has improved their cores okay intel has also improved their performance cores what intel has also done is they've added a ton of more cores across the lineup not to mention the fact that intel because they have the money for such research uh, for such implementation of features is going to be allowing you to either use ddr5 or ddr4 on your new 13th gen computer whereas amd is only going to be allowing you to use ddr5 and you know the performance difference with ddr5 ddr4 right now is still not that major it is there but it's not such a major thing you know uh and ddr4 is still a lot more expensive uh, ddr5 is still a lot more expensive than ddr4 you know you can get 64 gigs of ddr4 for very cheap like a little bit something over 200 bucks ddr5 still a lot more expensive you know personally i would much rather have 64 gigs of ddr4 as i have now than 32 gigs of ddr5 you know and you can also you know uh split that up a little bit you know i would rather have 32 gigs of ddr4 than 16 gigs of ddr5 for example so intel seems just way more com compelling and you know in terms of how benchmarks are gonna go and it's gonna be very interesting to see the pricing because i mean you know something like the ryzen 5 i don't think this is going to be able to compete with the i5s at all because the i5s will have the six performance cores in any case and they will also have i believe either four uh or or eight there might there might be i know they're gonna have eight they might have six it, it doesn't matter they are gonna be at least a 10 core part essentially and the highest i5 is gonna be a 14 core processor which is insane i, I have a ryzen uh, 9 5900x that's a 12 core cpu and now the mid-range i5 cpu for mental is gonna have 14 cores obviously a lot of those are efficiency cores they're still cores they're, they're still pretty much as good as skylake cpus you know so like just imagine like the comparison could basically be okay you have this ryzen 5 7600x and now we have the same you know six good cores comparable cores from intel plus eight efficiency cores you know it would sort of be like okay you have your two cpus but intel you know with intel you also have like two i7 four core cpus from skylake from a few years ago to help assist everything move along so it's it's gonna be really interesting to see if amd is gonna be able to compete at all i mean you know what happens if the ryzen 5 is released at like the normal 300 dollars price range and then intel also releases their i5 at the 300 dollars price range you know as far as multi-threaded workloads will go uh you know the the fourth there's there's just so many more cores it's just not even comparable you know so a, a nice generational improvement from amd but uh intel seems uh to have to, to will have taken a pretty dramatic lead at this point you know and obviously their top end part is going to be a 24 core part you know uh i think 
that Intel is going to be able to just absolutely crush AMD if they get the pricing right. If Intel just, you know, makes the prices a lot more expensive, then, you know, sure, it's not going to be such a clean cut answer. But, you know, as far as this generation is concerned, you know, AMD has a nice little bump in performance, but, you know, Intel's adding a pretty pretty crazy new improvements to their 13th gen lineup and you know uh, speculation around for the 14th generation is also very exciting as well you know so intel seems you know they, they've gotten a new ceo uh quite a, a while ago at this point and you know they really seem to have stepped on the gas like crazy whereas you know amd is still making great generational improvements but you know Intel is much bigger than AMD. They've got a lot, a lot bigger of a research and development budget than AMD. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be definitely interesting. Uh, personally, you know, I'm definitely way more hyped for Intel. I think Intel's generation is also going to be more important. You know, bringing these high core counts to the mid-range consumer CPUs is absolutely fantastic. You know, really pushing the industry, the performance, the computational power forward. So we will see what happens.